Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's topic are defibrillators, specifically implantable defibrillators or ICDs. There are different types of defibrillators. We'll talk a little bit about them. We'll give you a little bit of background and we'll spend most of the time talking about implantable defibrillators or ICDs. So a little bit of background. The heart's a muscle. It requires electricity to beat. Normally that electrical system is nice and orderly. Electricity comes from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom. But Certain people, particularly people with weak or diseased hearts, can develop abnormal heart rhythms coming from the bottom part of the heart. That is called ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. And that is very dangerous. People can pass out or even pass away from them. It's a, a medical emergency. Uh, and what happens is the bottom part beats so quickly that it doesn't pump blood to the rest of the, uh, the, the, rest of the body. And if it continues, the person will pass away. The good news, though, for this dangerous heart rhythm, it is very responsive to electrical shock. And so for the, the treatment for this is to get someone electrical shock immediately. So let's say I went into ventricular tachycardia. You guys would call 911. The paramedics would come and they would shock me. And that is a highly, highly successful. The purpose of an implantable defibrillator is to kind of cut out the middleman so that it is watching the heart constantly, and then heaven forbid, if it were to go into ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, it can get you out of it. It has the ability to pace the heart like a pacemaker, but it also has the ability to shock the heart, and that can be life-saving. So who would benefit from an ICD? The short of it is that people who are prone or who have a higher likelihood of having ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation are those who would benefit from an ICD. And the big groups of those are people who have weak hearts, that's the most common, people who have a heart squeeze or an ejection fraction less than 35%. Those are the people who have been proven with prior studies to benefit from a defibrillator. People who've had a cardiac arrest also benefit from a defibrillator because they might be prone to another cardiac arrest. Oftentimes those people have heart failure to start with. And then there's certain genetic conditions were a little bit more rare uh, in whom they are prone to cardiac arrest, those are people who benefit from a defibrillator. The most common, however, by and large, is uh, heart failure. Basically, that's a weakening of the heart. The heart's supposed to squeeze about 60% with each beat. People with heart failure have a weakening of the heart, and typically the cutoff is 35%. If your heart squeeze or your EF is less than 35%, then you might be vulnerable to an abnormal heart rhythm like ventricular tachycardia, and an ICD has been proven to reduce your risk of passing away. So what is an ICD? It's pretty straightforward, kind of like a pacemaker. It has two parts. It has a battery or a generator and it has the lead which goes into the heart. So it goes into the vein or the subclavian vein and that wire or that lead enters the heart and actually gets screwed right into the heart. So I wanted to show you, this is an example of one. It's a little bit thicker than a pacemaker. It's a little bit bigger than a pacemaker because it star stores more, uh, more charge. And this is the, the generator of the battery. And then it connects to a wire or the lead. So this is an example of a wire. It's fairly thin. And this is the part that enters the vein and then gets screwed into the heart. And then it connects to the generator. As far as how it gets there, um, it is a, a procedure. It usually takes about an hour. Um, it's done in our cardiac cath lab. What we do is we make an incision in the chest wall, and then we make space between the skin and the fat and the muscle for the generator to sit. We then enter the vein that runs under the collarbone, and we place the wire into the heart. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it, the risks are, are pretty low. About 99% of our patients uh, will go home the next day. 1% um, risk of injury to the lung, 1% risk of infection, 1 in thousands for something dangerous. And each of these risks, we, we do everything to avoid, and heaven forbid if they were to happen, we can treat them. Restrictions are pretty straightforward. You can't lift your arm over your shoulder for eight weeks so that you don't pull out the lead that we just placed. And the incision can't go underwater until the skin fully heals. Usually that takes about a couple of months. Follow-up is pretty straightforward. We see you at two weeks, make sure you're healing up okay. We see you then three months after that. And then we see you basically once a year, make sure everything's okay. We do a test or interrogation and we communicate with the defibrillator every three months with a remote check. So if your doctor has suggested that you might need one and you're uh, due to see an electrophysiologist, come on in and we'll talk about it. Um, this is something that has saved many, many lives in people who are prone to uh, uh, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. 
I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, leave us a comment or give us a call. Thank you.